I'm on the slopes of Table Mountain and right next to one of the walkways going right to the top. Now alongside these walkways there's a plant that grows here that's really unique and I don't think a lot of people know about them or really see them whilst walking up because they're so hidden away. And it's one of South Africa's carnivorous plants. Carnivorous plants, what does that mean? Well that's a plant that actually needs to catch insects to stay alive and to have enough nutrition to survive. And the plant that we're talking about today is this one right here, which is called Drosera ramentaceae. It's one of the rarest Droseras that you'll find, and it grows right here in Silver Mine and Table Mountain. Now, Drosera comes from the Greek word drosos, which means dew, and you'll see on the leaves these little droplets, like gooey stuff, and that is what gives it, gives it that dewy, um, look to it and that sparkle to the plant. Now that sparkle is not there for aesthetics. That sparkle is actually quite a bit of a death trap. The insects are attracted to the sparkle and and the oh, and just the, the prettiness of it and also the enzymes and things that the plant excretes attracts the insects, the insect sits on it and it gets stuck on that gooey, messy glue really on the leaf. But the enzymes in that goo that actually in the end um, dissolves the insect doesn't really kill it. Slowly but surely, and it can take quite some time, the leaf curves around the insects. So while when it landed on the leaf, the leaf starts to almost activate and because the insects like wants to get loose and it's all activated and it and it just wants to get free the more it struggles the more the plant knows dinner has arrived so slowly but surely the leaf falls across over the insect and that dew drops envelop it so in the end the insect actually smothers to death and then the enzymes inside the dew starts dissolving the insect and it gets absorbed into the plant and then the leaf would open again and only a little skeleton will stay behind which in the wind or in the rain will just wash away or fly away. This Drosera ramentaceae, like I said, is one of our rarest ones and it's quite a difficult one to grow. It's got a very very long taproot, up to half a meter. And why does it do it? Most Droseras like a peaty wet mix for them to grow. But not this one. This one is different. This one's unique because this one like shade first of all and more of a dry sandy mix. But it's got that long taproot and that taproot goes right down like I said to about half a meter in between the rocks where the moisture um, accumulates during the rainy season. And that sustains the plant with enough water throughout summer. So in summer it's dormant, it's resting. In winter when the rain falls, like now, it's all up and alive. Now this plant can also get quite tall. There's a lot of forest fires um, during summertime in the dry season. So when it's not burned down to a crispy, then it can get to almost a meter tall in shrubbery around it where it can sustain its growth all the way to the top. But usually you only find them uh, about this high as the ones you see right in front of you. So these cute little things, tricky to grow, but such an interesting plant. Another thing about Drosseras, which is quite sad though, as with a lot of plants, they are endangered, um, because Drosseras have thinning um, properties to them. So uh, pharmaceutical companies do use an extract from Drosseras in creams and things like that for people to get nice and thin and in shape but to contrary to belief it's not this Drosera that they use they actually use the more common Drosera madagascariensis so but on a lot of boxes they say it's this one which is so wrong and that's why it's also endangered so next time you run up Table Mountain look out for these guys on the shady sides of the walkways such a pretty thing to see and so interesting to show the kids